In this tutorial, you will learn what the restoration tool is used for and how it is operated. The tool can only be used if six voltages have been activated in the hardware configuration. The purpose of the tool is to test controllers with voltage-based automatic restoration logic. It can be used to test the correct behavior of line or midpoint reclosers as well as tie reclosers by simulating up or downstream reclosers. Let's have a look at a typical application for such a test. This is an open ring feeder with several reclosers. R1, R2, and R3 are line reclosers which are normally closed during operation. R4 is a tie recloser which is normally open. There is no communication between the reclosers. Now a permanent fault occurs between R1 and R2. First, R1 trips and tries to reclose before finally going into lockout. R2 and R3 trip one after another to isolate the line segments due to the loss of voltage on both sides. The tie recloser R4 detects a loss of voltage on one side and closes after its configured close time so that the power supply for customers between R3 and R4 can be restored. With the closing of R4, R3 detects voltage recovery on its load side. R3 then closes after its configured close time to restore the power supply for customers between R2 and R3. With the closing of R3, R2 detects voltage recovery on its load side and tries to close after its configured close time. Because the fault is still present, R2 trips and enters the lockout state. This means that only the customers between R1 and R2 are without power for as long as the fault exists. Power supply for all other customers is restored by the reclosers R3 and R4. Now let's have a look at how the different functions are tested with the restoration tool. First, we want to test the correct behavior of the line recloser R2 after R1 has gone into a lockout state. R2 should open because of the loss of voltage. On the configuration page, select the test mode Open for loss of voltage on both sides. Enter the open time setting. This is the time which the control should open within according to the settings and the tolerance. Then proceed to the load page and specify the duration of the pre-fault state. Enter the load angle. The load current value is taken from the nominal values defined in the hardware configuration. On the test screen, you will see a diagram of your application showing the switching states of the reclosers during the test. In the Times area on the right, you will see the measured open time compared to the open time setting. If the measured time is within the defined tolerance, the test is assessed OK, which means that the recloser R2 in our example opens within the correct time limit. Now assume you are testing the tie recloser R4, which closes after it detects a loss of voltage on side 1 due to the opening of R2 and R3. Select the application Tie Recloser and on the configuration page, select the test mode Loss of Voltage Side 1 from the drop down menu. Enter the close time setting, the tolerance, and the maximum trip time for the controller. During the time before loss, the load current will be output as a prefault state. When you have entered the load angle on the next page, you can start testing. The test will be assessed OK if the measured close time is within the defined tolerance and the recloser control did not trip during the pre-fault state. The next step in our example is the reclosing of R3. R3 detects a voltage on the load side and then closes. 
You can test this in the application mode recloser with close for voltage on load side only. Select successful closing. Then specify the other parameters as shown before. Before testing, make sure the initial state of the circuit breaker is open, otherwise the test will not work. The last step of the sequence in our example is the closing attempt of R2. R2 detects a voltage on the load side and attempts to close. R2 will not be able to close because the fault between R2 and R1 is still present. To test this behavior of R2, select Close for Voltage on Load Side Only as we did in the previous example, but this time select Unsuccessful Closing. Then enter the timing and tolerance information. On the next page, you will need to specify the fault type, fault current, and fault voltage. The fault will be the last state output by the ARCO 400 to simulate the still existing fault. In our example, we assume a three-phase fault. The results of the test are assessed based on the measured close time and the verification of the lockout state at the end of the test. For information about other test modes not shown in this tutorial, please have a look at the ARCO Control User Manual, where you can find additional application examples.